When you're looking to sell online, there are so many platforms, it's confusing to know where to start. And although you can sell in more than one place, each of them has their own learning curve. So let's look into the cost, ease to set up the customer base and many other factors, including some secret data about what buyers actually think about each of the platforms. You're really going to want to hang around for that. Because happy customers are a great indication that a platform's likely to grow. And if the platform grows, then there's a good chance that you could grow with it. First, I want to just quickly rule out some for the first platform. I'm not saying these are bad platforms at all, but they're just probably not a good idea to pick for your very first. Things like New Monday, Not on the High Street and Folksy. These are just not that well known to customers yet. And while it can be good to be the small fish in the big puddle, you're gambling on that being the one platform that takes off. And some of these have been around for quite a while and haven't taken off yet. And many people that I've talked to about these platforms have found sales very few and far between. Redbubble and Teespring, although these can be great sites for your digital art and custom designs. And there's no cost to create. For example, your 200 different types of mugs. If no one buys, it doesn't cost you anything. But all these places tend to need you to be able to drive your own traffic. They might work for an extreme niche and something like Redbubble could be handy if you are looking to use copyright type designs. Although it is limited, you're unlikely to be able to sell your Disney themed things. Just don't mess with a mouse. But for normal artists and crafters looking to sell, it's unlikely a good place to start. Facebook Marketplace, let's rule that out for just now. There is really no buyer or seller help there. It's it's a car boot sale. And it's also going to be really difficult to build your brand. Your own website? This can sound appealing and I'm not going to say don't have your own website, but don't start there expecting to grow unless you really have the skills. And also, even if you know how to build and maintain a website, you're still going to have to drive all your own traffic there. And the problem is really a trust issue. Remember when I tried to buy the dog paddling pool from a Facebook ad and it ended up being hamster sized, customers are going to have trouble trusting that you're a decent creator. We need to build brand awareness first of all before a website's likely to really start getting its own traction. So for me, at this moment in time, there's really only three that hit enough boxes to be the one to put your main focus on to get you started. And these are eBay, Etsy and Amazon Handmade. Let's start with Amazon Handmade. A massive pro with this is just the massive size of the audience. Although Amazon Handmade isn't that well known itself, items from Amazon Handmade show up in the main Amazon. So you've got the potential audience of those around 300 million buyers and growing. And also these buyers are return buyers. Amazon has Amazon Prime to lock people into buying from Amazon. And the seller support is there at least. There's 24 hour live chat. Now I've been digging into lots of data all around the place and we are a little early for the 2021 data. So this will be a little a touch out of date but all the sources say something slightly different, so I'm giving kind of average figures. And it's hard to get numbers for actual handmade on Amazon because Amazon doesn't really break down these figures very well. But the total amount in third party sales on Amazon in 2020 was around $80 billion for the whole year. And there's roughly about 6 million sellers. So this leaves Amazon creators, if you divide one by the other, with the highest average annual, annual earnings out of the three platforms. There's a potential $13,000 a year. I know this doesn't sound loads, but but just wait. And reiterating, we don't know how much of this went to Amazon Handmade. It does show though there is a potential for decent numbers. It also has a reasonably simple free structure and your listings never expire. But a kind of con and potential pro, depending on your, what you sell, is what is Amazon known for? It is known for super fast shipping, next day shipping. Now for most handmade creators, this isn't possible unless there is fulfilled by Amazon, which is if you can warehouse your items, if you can send them into Amazon, then into the Amazon warehouses and warehouse them, then Amazon will ship them on your behalf. 
It costs money, of course, everything does, but this could make your items next day available. But that is really not going to work if you're a one-of-a-kind seller or limited runs if you can't make these massive quantities. It can also be pretty slow to set up to become an, a seller on Amazon Handmade. You have to first sign up as a professional seller at $39.99 per month and then apply for Amazon Handmade. If you're accepted, then those fees are waived, but this can take you a good week or two to really get accepted into this, possibly even longer some people are telling me. Another thing that could be a real con to some of you is it can take a bit of time to get your fees. Fees are not credited into your account until your item is shipped, so if you're custom making or personalising something you might have a bit of time to wait when you really need that money to create the item. And then once the money is in your Amazon account they're only deposited into your bank twice a week. So for from the sale to you physically having the money in your mitts might take a little bit of time. And if you have a roaring great busy business that's possibly not an issue but if you're hand to mouth at the minute in time if you're just small and every penny counts this could be a big difference. Also Amazon Handmade kind of limits you if you're planning to grow big you can't outsource the same as you can in other places everything really has to be made by you or a very small team so remember what we said about the warehousing that might not be possible if you can't scale up your work. There's also at the minute in time no digital options and it's not really set up for custom work so that could be very difficult. What about eBay then? eBay is well known as well as Amazon eBay is very well known however it's well known for cheap items or for electronics. Think about it yourself in fact let me know in the comments down below what do you go to eBay for? Personally I go if I'm wanting a cable that I lost replaced or if I'm wanting something cheap or second hand. I I don't tend to go there for quality. eBay also has a very high number of sellers, the highest, at 25 million sellers worldwide. Now, like any of these, I don't know exactly how active all of them are, but that's a lot of sellers. And the gross mean sales, how much actual dollar amount has been sold in a year in total on eBay is around 10 times what it is on Etsy. And surprisingly, it's actually more than Amazon third party sellers. Bear in mind, Amazon revenue numbers also take into account all their other business models, them selling themselves and Amazon Prime. On eBay, fees are pretty confusing. It's hard to say how expensive it's going to be because it depends on so many factors. There are six different plans ranging from zero per month to $299 a month all the way up to $2,999 a month. And the sales fee is 10% or not depending on what category you're in. And low performance shops pay additional fees and if you have a dispute raised against you and you lose you pay a fine for that. So these fees could really rack up. And while personalizations are possible on eBay and custom is possible, I've done some custom work on eBay, it's not as easy Customers don't like chatting on eBay, so there's less back and forth, so it can be hard to do custom work. So both eBay and Amazon are not really known. People don't go, them, go to them for handmade. Although out of the two, I'm going to say that Amazon does, if it wants to, has the potential to be able to grow that market because Amazon is very good at opening up to other markets. We've seen in the past couple of years that people now buy their grocery shopping on Amazon. So it is capable of expanding if it chooses to. And the final one that obviously I know the most about is Etsy. It is known for handmade and actually it's done really well through this pandemic. It's actually outpaced eBay in its growth during the pandemic. That's because it was able to hit on the selling masks and things. It fired in a good deal of money into advertising at just the right time. So done good there. But if we divide the gross mean sales by the number of sellers, it has the lowest potential annual, annual earnings, the lowest annual potential average per seller at just $2,355 a year. Bear in mind with all of these, these are just averages. So if you have lots of sellers that aren't really making any sales, this drives the average down. And if you're having a small number of sellers that are selling real high value items, cars and houses, 
<laughs> that can drive the average up. So we can't compare eggs with eggs between Amazon, Etsy and eBay. Etsy currently has the worst customer support for sellers. Customer support for buyers is good, but customer support for sellers not so great. This has just happened in the past six months and things may change in the future. And Etsy just now is really popular for print on demand. So with every platform there's lots of pros and cons here and you have to weigh them up for yourself. But I have some super secret data on what the customers think that might help sway your mind here. E-Rank, who I also work for but videos here are my own words, they commissioned a survey of over 1,000 actual Etsy buyers. They asked a whole range of questions to get into the mind of buyers. And myself and my friend Starla Moore are the only people with exclusive access to this data. But a question asked that's relevant to today's video was, have you ever had a bad experience buying on the following websites? Now, although they asked about other platforms as well, I'm just going to focus in on these big three that we were looking at. eBay was the worst, with only 32% of people saying they'd never had a bad experience experience buying on eBay. 40% of people on Amazon said the same thing, but 57% of customers said they'd never had a bad experience buying on Etsy. But having a bad experience can prevent people wanting to return and buy again. And in the past two years, with Etsy growing so many new customers, this is actually a really good thing that it's being known for having a good experience. So that influx of new customers is likely to keep on returning and keep on growing the platform. And let's focus in on those real bad experiences. So the people saying from sometimes, often and always having a bad experience on the site. Let's look at that. 22% of Amazon buyers said this, but a whopping 37.9% of eBay buyers have had a bad experience at least sometimes when buying on eBay. And only 14.1% of Etsy buyers have had a bad experience sometimes or more. These positive experiences are a great signal. But wait, Erang asked even more questions. One I love is Erang asked if customers feel good about buying on a certain site. And around one third of eBay customers said they do not feel good buying on eBay. I've had that remorse. 11.9% of buyers don't feel good buying on Amazon. But, and wait for this number. 96% of buyers feel good buying from Etsy. 96%. Obviously, feel good can mean different things to different people. Supporting an individual creator, finding unique gifts, or even Etsy's commitment to going green, all of these can make people feel good about buying on a platform. But having positive experiences and feeling good about shopping on a site can lead to people spending more money, coming back more often, and referring to their friends. I don't know about you, but I'm wary to spend a large amount of money on something from eBay. It just doesn't have that trust factor for me. Whereas I feel because the individual seller's shop on Etsy is the individual seller, so if they don't give me what they've promised the item's going to be, I can kick up a stink. So I always feel it's more likely I'm going to get the thing that I've ordered on Etsy and not some kind of knockoff terrible replica. Which is the best platform to sell on depends. But I'm going to say, for me, on balance, Etsy Etsy is still the best we've got. I'm not saying it's per I'm not saying it's perfect by any means. But if for nothing else, the customers are loving it. And customers that are coming in with a positive, happy attitude are easier to deal with. I have heard from plenty of people that Amazon handmade customers and eBay customers are way more grumpy. So if they've got that negative attitude and anything goes wrong, it's going to be much harder to deal with them. So if your items are something that could be warehoused, Amazon might be the best bet for you. If you've got high volume, low cost items, then perhaps eBay. But I genuinely feel for handmade items at the moment in time, Etsy is the best bet. Now, if you love this super exciting brand new data, you want to go over to my friend Starla's video as she's breaking down some more of this data. In her latest video, she's uncovering one secret to customer service that customers really want. And she even has some free files to help make the process process easier. Don't forget to subscribe to her and tell her I sent you. Thank you so much. See you next time.